There are all kinds of really good reasons to buy gold. I guess I hadn't really thought of this one previously, but apparently I need to add paying for a haircut to the list. But I feel like I'm gonna need some change back. So yesterday, the story of the remote mining community in Venezuela made the rounds as a real example of gold being used for bartering. It's definitely an interesting story and not one that I take too seriously, but Venezuela does come up a lot in the community as an example of hyperinflation, as an example of financial collapse, and also a case for holding precious metals. The local currency, as we all know, the Bolivar, I'll spare you my poor Spanish accent, it's more or less worthless. So the Bloomberg story covers a remote mining town, and I'm not going to read it back to you, but I'll leave you a link in the description. It's an interesting story. In the town, the local businesses are taking gold for payment. So a few flakes for a haircut, quarter of a gram for lunch, half a gram for a room at the hotel. It's a really good example of the staying power of gold as a store of value since it's been more than a century since gold has actually been used as a currency. It's also a story that might make you think that you should be buying smaller gold, picking up grams, maybe even those divisible combi bars from Valcambi or the sheets of maple grams from the RCM. But before you do that, I'd say keep in mind that the town in Venezuela that's profiled in that story is a mining town. And some of the workers there are actually paid in gold. So just because it makes sense there does not mean that it would make sense elsewhere. If you want another example of hyper-localized bartering, check out The Trader on Netflix. That documentary follows a man in a part of Georgia, and we're talking about the country in Eastern Europe, not the state in the United States, where money is mostly worthless and potatoes are the ultimate unit of exchange. So think about that. Their currency collapse led to a food source as the ultimate store of value. So, I don't personally think we're accumulating gold to make direct payments in the future. I think we're accumulating it to protect our livelihood at a much higher level. It's a strategic decision rather than a tactical decision. It's chess rather than checkers. Now, if you have no gold and you have no intention at this time to hold any significant wealth in gold, then grab yourself a few grams. See if it hooks you. But if you're already convinced that having gold is a good idea, then I don't think that you should let a story like the mining town in Venezuela move you in the direction of buying smaller gold. Because the smaller you go, the higher your unit cost becomes. You'll find that the premium on grams is exceptionally high and the buyback is surprisingly low. And that's if you're selling back to a local coin shop, you have other options. What I'll say about those stories of bartering with gold is that they're fun. The idea of economic collapse should scare the hell out of us, but there's something about the idea that we have this alternative asset that would help us survive a catastrophe that kind of sucks you in. And if you're already buying gold by the gram because that's the price that you want to spend, nothing I said is meant to try to dissuade you. We all know that the premium percentage on gold goes down the larger the unit of gold, but nobody can make the decision for you. If you want to jump down the psychology rabbit hole again, if you want to get into the habit of buying gold, the way you do it is to make it easy. You find your cadence, you find the amount that's comfortable, and you find the sellers that you trust, and then you go with it. You want to get rid of as many obstacles as you can. For some people, that's a quarter ounce a month. For some, it's an ounce every other month, every month. For some, it's a gram whenever they feel like it. Another thing you can do is just surround yourself with other people buying gold to the extent that that's possible. And I think that's kind of what we're doing here on YouTube since it's not really something that you should be doing out on the town with the guys. You don't want to flash that new buffalo watching the fight at the bar. And that's probably the closest thing to actual financial advice that I can give. If you want to address that possibility of barter, well, silver might actually be a little bit better prospect since its value is more in line with common daily needs. Maybe you could secure that haircut, that food, that stay in a hotel with silver. Personally, I don't think it's at all likely, but again, I understand how people get sucked into that idea. So at a much higher level, if you want to secure your overall financial well-being, well, that's where gold comes in. It's a strategic defensive asset and I'd throw in a chess analogy if I had one, but 
I can't come up with anything. I think it's always good to remember that gold can drive you a little bit nuts. And a lot of the people who talk about it here, well, they are a little bit nuts. And I'm not here to tell you that you will never use gold in some kind of trade, but it's worth thinking through the likelihood of that scenario, how you might even use it. You should think about that before deciding a buying strategy that might just burn a bunch of premium. There's a quote that gets misattributed to Walt Whitman a lot. It goes like this, be curious, not judgmental. And I'm not trying to be judgmental here. I'm just trying to think through how and when I might need gold and then build a buying strategy around that. And since we're being curious here, one other thing to consider that I personally think is a more serious possibility than a catastrophic event that would knock us back to the Stone Age is the increased scrutiny of cash inflows and outflows by the government and by the IRS. Uh, there's a proposal that would require banks to report aggregate cash inflows and outflows to any account that exceed $10,000 annually. And if you live in the United States, you've probably heard about this proposal. It was originally set at $600, but $10,000 is still a ridiculously low number. The proposal has nothing to do with individual transactions like some are telling you. It doesn't have anything to do with sources necessarily either, but at the end of the year, your bank would have to report the total amount going in and the total amount going out, assuming that those numbers exceed $10,000. And they will for most people. That $10,000 does not include normal income sources from standard wages or entitlements like Social Security. But it's still set at a low enough number where it's going to result in a lot more reporting for a lot more people. And that's the kind of event that might possibly lead people to consider trading an asset that's outside of the banking system. And I don't mean that people should be trying to avoid taxes. I'm certainly not telling you that I do that or that you should do that. But I think it's a safe assumption that some people will not like the additional scrutiny on their bank accounts. Again, this is not an actual law. This is a proposal. And if it did make it into law, modified or otherwise, it wouldn't go into effect until December of 2022. Now, my point in bringing that up is just to say that planning for shit hit the fan events where you're bartering gold for bread might put you on a certain track for gold accumulation. The kinds of things that you might buy for that storyline would probably burn a lot in premium. But planning for far more likely events will result in a completely different buying strategy. Just something to consider. So let us know where you're at on this one. I meant to run a poll on the topic, but I didn't want to bombard you all. I've been running a few. So tell us if you're buying gold with bartering in mind, what you're buying if you are. And if you're not, maybe tell us what you're buying because you're not. I know that my focus on those gold buffaloes the last year or so has definitely not been to ultimately barter them off. The like button is down there as well if you're into the topic. And if you're still here, thank you again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.